because we've got so many new faces, I'll give you just a quick history lesson because a lot of people, I keep hearing things about the 40 years in planning and all this sort of stuff and a lot of it's not true. Of the six different corridors, Orange Route was chosen. It was chosen because it had the least environmental impact. It started at Campusick Road at the bottom of uh, 2J Road alongside Jane Brook, but before Stratton and before crossing Jane Brook. It, it was only an 18 kilometre road, which was from Lilydale Road connecting through to Great Eastern Highway. It was going to be a single lane in each direction with a corridor wide enough for four lanes and 2J Road was to be upgraded, which has pretty much been done. So that was Orange Route. So don't let anyone tell you that Eastlink is Orange Route. That was an 18 kilometre stretch of road chosen for its environmental responsibility. The Metropolitan Region Corridor was established in the 90s. Now, this thing died again in the 80s um, and everyone forgot about it. There was an accident on Greenmount Hill in 1993, a very bad accident. A number of people got killed. They banned the large trucks. They put the speed limit on Greenmount for trucks for 40 k's over 22 tonnes. And they put the ramp, which at the time, that ramp, the escape ramp for the trucks, was the first in the world. Main Roads engineers designed that. First one ever built in the world. Now they're everywhere. Hasn't been another accident since that time. So Greenmount has been successfully adapted to, to suit the conditions. But when that happened, they said, hang on, we need to look at this Perth Adelaide National Highway idea. If Great Eastern Highway had it been properly named, back in the 80s, we wouldn't all be sitting here because the, the road is a street pretending to be a highway between Midland and Sawyers Valley. And that's the problem and that's where the problem lies. Orange Route was put onto the, the, um, the road corridor. Um, they allocated the space for it. They did buy up a bunch of land, but it stops at Wooraloo. It doesn't go all the way through to Northam and it doesn't go back into, I think it's Beachborough Road. So this is 80 kilometres versus 18 kilometres. At the same time as East Link was planned, North Link was planned, so 1994. They, both roads were planned at the same time. Both corridors were established. North Link is not in that corridor. Um, it got moved and it got moved to the worst of six locations. North Link had six options, the same as East Link had, or Orange Route had six options. They picked the best of the three worst because the community didn't want it in Swan Valley. And it was, so what's now Drumpelia Drive was meant to be uh, the North Link path. So it got moved. So if your property is directly affected by this road corridor, uh, they change that one, they can change this one. The business case, so we've been looking at, it's a great point, like the traffic modelling um, is really, really low. Northlink at the moment is running at 15% of its capacity uh, and that's after, and there's still trucks using Great Northern Highway every day. It's, it's habit, they still do it. Um, and there's trucks that service the area. What's being missed is that Great Eastern Highway has been around since the 1930s and Great Eastern Highway is the corridor that everyone lives along. So 80%, if you compare the two paths, 80% of residents live along Great Eastern Highway. They're trying to sell us a safety message and the safety message is nonsense because they're not changing Great Eastern Highway. They're not doing anything to it. What they're suggesting is they're getting trucks off the road and that's not true either. Until the pandemic hit, the trucks weren't allowed, the road trains were not allowed to come down Great Eastern Highway. Everyone remembers the great toilet paper war of 2020? Okay, so when that happened, they did a trial to let road trains come back down Great Eastern Highway. And they, they have to be trucks of the highest standards, which most of the interstate trucks are to the highest standard. So they have to have safety features, they have to have monitoring, telemetry, and they've been doing it for two years and no one even noticed. The first time we met with the integrated project team from Eastlink, they were saying, oh, well, we can't get RAV7 trucks down Greenmount Hill. So, well, they do it every day. And the guy that I was <laughs> saying that to, he turned around to his boss and says he knows about the trucks. We, <laughs> we ruined their argument. They have changed. The, the, they had a whole section on benefits of this road. It's gone now because we took it away. It was all about trucks and about road safety. Great Eastern Highway is a busy road because of local traffic. So it's traffic congestion and there's urban freight. So when we say get rid of the trucks, like quarry trucks aren't going to go over to Eastlink. 
It's miles away. None of the, the southern highway trucks aren't going to go over to Eastlink. It's miles out of their way. Urban deliveries are expected to rise by 60%. That is the single biggest growth of any of the um, freight uh, load around Australia is urban freight. So if urban freight goes up by 60%, no one, by the time Eastlink's built, no one's even going to notice uh, any reduction in trucks um, on Great Eastern Highway. Uh, Great Eastern Highway is about 70% of its capacity now at the worst times of day. So seven in the morning, four in the afternoon. 10 years from now, it's, it'll be 100% or just over if they don't do something about Great Eastern Highway. And that's got nothing to do with Eastlink. Um, that is local community, urban freight um, and commuters who use that, that route and they're not going to change. Yep. Is that just the main section between Greenmount and Warrawee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so once you get past Sawyers Valley, there is little to no demand on that road. We don't have a traffic congestion problem out there. We have driver behaviour issues, um, which is probably the single biggest problem, but traffic congestion is not an issue. Road design is an issue out there. If you have, a, if you have an off, it's a big one, but road design on, the, on that sort of Midland to, to Sawyers Valley section, that, that is the worst part of this whole road right the way through its path. So that, I just wanted to do a little bit of sort of the history of this project and um, the, the tall tales that are attached to it. You know, this, what they're going to do is build a freeway to Gidjigan up, okay? Can anyone name a freeway anywhere that doesn't have houses all the way along it? Like, I've never seen one. Uh, they're saying they're going to separate the trucks. Can anyone name a road which is truck only? Like, there's no such thing. They're not separating anything. It's, it's a nonsense proposition um, that they're coming up with. So anyway, that's just a little bit of background that we've been over plenty of times. But the facts aren't moving the needle. This is the problem that we're having. All of the facts are on our side. Everything is in our favour. We've looked at the traffic. We've looked at the, you know, alternative... Uh, options. We've looked at, you know, things like um, public transport hub in Mundaring, you know, so how do you reduce the traffic congestion between Mundaring and Midland? Well, express buses and a proper traffic hub and parking and all that kind of, like, there's none of that infrastructure there. Um, there's nowhere near enough demand to support the road. Like I said already, Northlink's at 15%. Um, Eastlink ignores that traffic congestion and urban freight problem. And, you know, when we're talking about trucks, like, do you know that if you're in an accident and you get hit by a truck, are you going, oh, that's only 80 tonne. Like, that's, that's not going to hurt as much as 100 tonne. Like, the trucks are still going to be there. Great Eastern Highway, it's unsafe, densely populated, it needs to be upgraded. Now, this highway funding, it's tied to a specific design. And this is a real problem. Um, the road design is a rubber stamp that they're using all over Australia. So part of our research is understanding Link roads have been built in Victoria, a lot in Brisbane, and they've done them in Sydney as well, all to the same standard. It's a rubber stamp, and it's looking for a spot on the map where it will fit. And that's the elephant. And that's the elephant that we need to talk about, is this rubber stamp. So the billions of dollars we can come up with, in this room we could sit down and come up with 25 alternatives to this road and probably save them half of what it would cost, just with general conversation. But this money, federally funded money, is tied to that design, okay? If we don't build to that design, and that design will only fit in one place on the map, that money goes away. And this is where we start to run into trouble. No road, no cash. So there's no political will to turn, it down, to turn down the federal funding, okay? Why would they? City of Swan. Um, the, the projections for City of Swan is 100,000 more residents uh, by 2031, less, less than a decade. Um, where are they going to put them? Along a freeway. Um, you know, who's going to build the freeway? City of Swan don't have to. They're not going to provide any of the infrastructure. The developers will be rubbing their hands together. This will be suburban before you know it. They're not going to turn it down. We can come up with all the options. We can give them all of the data and it's not going to make any difference because the money's tied to the design of the road. Sounds like bad news. The biggest thing that we can do is community engagement. 
that is the one chance where we can apply pressure. We're talking 50,000 residents affected by this proposal, okay? So, and that, and so I'm including the residents who are along Great Eastern Highway because they've been lied to, they're, they've been promised safety and they're not actually going to see anything, nothing's going to change there. So what we need to do is we need to find ways to build our community, which is why we want to talk to you guys and we'd like you guys to tell other people, let's get this message out there as quickly as possible because the, the more pressure we can apply the better. So we've got elements of councils who are uh, quite committed to putting a stop to it, but they're, they're in the minority. I was doing some research the other day. So there's some City of Swan councillors who only got 1,500 votes at the last election and they're in office. You know, so if you've got a community of 2,000, suddenly they're under direct threat. So that's the sort of numbers that we need to be talking, is we need to get into the thousands. That is the answer because all the other stuff that we've done, it's, it's like it's not going to change. Um, the path of this road. So what I want to do is give you guys some talking points because we do keep hearing the same things about ticking boxes, business plans, you know, we, we hear this constantly. Um, your water, I just like, and it, we'll get to that in a second. But so just starting off, the, 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 the whole page of uh, benefits that they were selling us last year, like I said, is gone. This is what's left. The only benefits they're giving us now, 80 kilometres of new and improved highway, shorter travel time between Roe Highway and Northam. <laughs> Who's excited? What's that travel time? Uh, it doesn't even say. It just says shorter. It did say 13 minutes. Yep. Yep. That's gone, yeah. So, and it, they're future-proofing our state freight network. So first of all, future-proofing, when you're talking to people. Fuel prices, how is a highway future-proof at the current, you know, the way the fuel prices are progressing at the moment? That is going to impact whether this road is even necessary. They want to tax trucks. I sent out a, cu a couple of links today because I've been reading a bit of information about this sort of federal plan to tax heavy vehicles. That's going to impact whether the balance between rail and road in terms of um, you know, economy of scale. Uh, Westport is going to affect the future of our state's freight network more than anything else. It's going to be completely connected. So Westport will be the hub for um, sea freight, road freight, rail freight coming into Perth. Um, we're also doing freight direct to the northwest now, um, which they never used to do. So a lot of like the north link is just going to stay empty forever. The rail is being prioritised. You know, this, this uh, washed away the rail, look what happened to the supermarkets um, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, emptied the shelves. Climate change is going to affect, you know, it was 10 years in the future, it's going to get interesting. 80% um, of the goods on our shelves, this is Rita Safiotti's words, um, were delivered by rail just recently and then they brought in a ship because the road's gone because of climate change. This story about shorter travel times, so until 2021, road trains, they just couldn't use that, that path at all. Um, there's a permit system, they can get a three year permit, only costs 50 bucks. If your truck meets the standard, the driver meets the standard, down you come. So it used to take as much as six hours to move three trailers. So they would stop at Northam, unhook a trailer, bring two to Perth. If they were lucky, take two back to Northam, unhook, grab their other trailer, drive Northam to Perth, pick up, unload that, pick up another trailer, bring it back to Northam, put the three together and get on their way. So they had as much as a six hour turnaround, you know, 70 minutes each direction, unloading time and all that sort of stuff. So reducing it to an hour is already a massive advantage. Taking another 10 minutes off is just like irrelevant on a 4,000 kilometre journey. When they say we need it for the trucks, we don't. The trucks are using it every day right now without incident and that travel time's already been massively reduced. So this 80 kilometres of new and improved highway. Mega projects, so this is what's known as a mega project. Now, the, the Grattan Institute have done a report on these. They've been happening all over Australia. Their cost blowouts are huge. Um, their blowing out is average of 40%. So this project is, is budgeted. At the last comment was like 2.4 billion. Even if that were true, 40% on top of that, we're into the... 3 billion plus, 3.3, 3.4. There's not going to be any improvements to existing highways and connector roads. 
there's going to be complete devastation of the underlying environment. This road design starts at the base and builds up from there. That's why it's so expensive. The plan is the road's meant to last 100 years. Um, if you drive on Northlink, it doesn't. It's not going to. So Northlink was only 37 kilometres. I keep joining these because they're to the same standard. Uh, 37 kilometres of Northlink. They cleared 1,004 hectares of land for that 37 case, and we're talking 80. And that was 1.02 billion four years ago. Sand. Yes. <laughs> With only like five interchanges and but lots of dead ends and all that sort of stuff. Uh, their planting didn't go well, everything's dead. These are issues that are important to people um, and everyone's got their own, what I was saying to you, Charles, earlier, everyone's got their own reason. Whatever your connection is to the project, um, there are some key points. So the pollution, uh, vehicle emissions, the construction emissions. Um, there is going to be permanent noise pollution. There's going to be light pollution. There's going to be chemical runoff from the construction of the road and then obviously use of the road and if they ever have any spills. The particulate pollution, the diesel pollution, it's carcinogenic. You're inviting it, you're bringing it to Gidjiganup for no good reason. So we are going to have an air quality impact, definitely. The urban sprawl. Perth is twice the size of Tokyo already and we've got one sixth of the population of that city. So we are as spread out as, you know, it's 150 kilometre long, I think we're sort of token world's longest city. Why let them do the same thing this way? And the, the whole region is reliant on the rainwater, all right? So your dams and stuff, the quality of that water is going to be impacted. It's not just that they, they might say to you, we'll dig you a new dam. The quality of that water is going to be impacted by all this. The quality of our groundwater is going to be impacted by this and the paths of our groundwater is going to be impacted by this. So for people who are more community focused, we're bypassing Mundaring. It may not feel like it to the people of Mundaring until it's happened, but we're bypassing Mundaring. Gidjiganup's going to be the new Ellenbrook. It's going to be the new corridor. Mundaring's in trouble. You're ruining the rural lifestyle across all of the villages. So. Wurlu, Wandawi, Bakers Hill, everywhere, we're losing that lifestyle. It sets us up for car dependence. There's no improvements uh, to the existing highways and there's no improvement to the connector roads. So if you're in Mundaring and you want to get across to East Link, right, uh, Stoneville Road, it's not great, it's not safe, you know. None of those roads are. None of the connectors that join 2J Road to Great Eastern Highway are safe. It's an irreversible change across the entire region. We can't measure this thing. As a community, we can't measure what it's going to do and what it's going to mean to the whole region. So we need to get people on board. And it ignores completely why we choose to live here. And then obviously, there's no infrastructure here. So rainwater, you know, we, I, I was talking to one of the councillors from Mundaring and he was saying Mundaring um, sewerage, the wastewater is at, like at 110% capacity already. Um, you know, so if we do more development and all that sort of stuff, that's going to be impacted and there's nothing on the 2J roadside. So environmentally, massive habitat loss. Um, more suburban sprawl, it's not, it's not a tourist destination, you know. The potential up here for businesses like, like uh, Chris's, right, the potential is huge. Shire and Northam have been uh, promoting a new, you know, mountain bike trails, cross-country trails. The kept track is hugely popular of a weekend. No one is going to just go to a new, let's go from one suburb to another suburb. So say goodbye to tourism. It's a green belt at the moment because this corridor has been planned a long time ago and left. It is a green belt. There are trees there and getting rid of them is going to be disastrous. It's a connection and it supports our water supply. Perth water is under massive threat and it's because we keep cutting the connections. So our water catchment is up here our water storage is um, Mundaring Weir and Nangara Mound and uh, Airport, Jandicott, uh, Jandicott Mound, they're underground resources. Well, Nangara Mound in the north is being resupplied with recycled toilet water. So we're already, um, you know, and Mundaring Weir is being resupplied with desalination water, okay? And they're calling that sustainable. That is highly energy dependent, like it is, that is absolute nonsense. So our logo one day will be come to Perth, get on the piss, it's the water you drink. Um, sorry. <laughs> we should be protecting the water catchment. The land, the traditional land use was perfectly adapted 
to accommodate big floods, like, you know, flash rains, lots of groundwater, lots of runoff. Um, we're killing it, and tarmac's not good for retaining water. Transport operators, what they actually want is free-flowing traffic on Great Eastern Highway between Northam and Rowe Highway. They want the RAV network, the Restricted Access Vehicle Network, to be opened up. It's the last piece of the puzzle, Northam to, to Rowe Highway. They don't care how it's done, they just want to be able to bring those three trailers right the way through. Uh, they want reduced traffic congestion on Great Eastern Highway because interactions with cars are dangerous. They want the, the northern, the, the road train assembly area could be relocated to Mundaring. It doesn't need to be out at Northern. So for the trucks that don't meet the standard to let them come down Greenmount Hill, let them unhook at Mundaring and save, you know, a couple of hours on their travel. They would like the, the original orange route constructed so that we do have the option of using 2J Road. So for example, big oversized loads or whatever it is, we've got two pathways that we can actually use. But just the, the single lane orange route, the original country road. I'll separate through traffic from local traffic through town sites. I'm gonna show you a picture of that shortly. Merging lanes on Great Eastern Highway. So no interactions with vehicles that can be at right angles. So cars can't cross and any merging is in travelling in the same direction. That is a massive reduction in people being killed and seriously injured on our roads. Um, we can do that, we've got the capacity to do that. Um, improving rest areas and facilities along the east-west corridor for all transport operators. Fatigue usually affects them towards the end of the trip. It's the most common outcome. So improving that, if you've got $3 billion in your pocket, surely we can do something for them. Um, and then improving the road verges and centre dividers um, everywhere. <laughs> you know, road verges, one of the most dangerous things we do, you only have to make a small mistake. You're off on the edge, you're straight into a tree or whatever. All right? We just need uh, some improvement on that, in that area. And again, we save lives. Um, community, reduce the risk of being killed or seriously injured on our roads. So that's what people really want, not... Um, get rid of trucks, it's not, that's not the question. The question is, would you like to reduce the risk of being killed or seriously injured on our roads? Yes, okay, we can do that. There's engineers at main roads that we can ask them that question, all right, and they can investigate, and I'll show you some of their solutions. We'd like viable public transport options across the hills. I live in one Dowie. I work in the city three days a week. I get on the bus at six o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, um, you know, bus to Midland train, or cycle. I do it because I want to just minimise my impact. If I have to stay late or anything like that, I have to drive, I've got no choice. Park and ride, express buses, Mundaring and Midland Rail. People need to get the impression that Mundaring should be a hub, you know, for all of this sort of infrastructure. Um, redesigning Great Eastern Highway. Remove all obstructions, uh, intersections, traffic lights, turning lanes, turning traffic and driveways. And apply the safe road design principles to all of those connector roads between sort of where, or 2J Road and Great Eastern Highway. So councils, please recognise Mundaring as a strategic hub and support it with infrastructure project, projects that reduce our dependence on cars. 86% of the traffic every day when it's busy are cars, not trucks, 86%. So if you can have an impact there, you reduce the load on everybody. Northam, Northam was traditionally, uh, so it's a freight hub uh, because of all the wheat belt um, everything, all the services return back to Northam. The interstate rail is through Northam. Northam has an opportunity for raid, uh, rail, road and urban freight. If they ever do come up with electric trucks, which Jessica Shaw promised me was the solution to everything, they'll probably be short range for a start. So, you know, big trucks into Northam, small trucks, electric trucks, Northam to Perth. Solution. This road's so expensive, everyone who uses it every day, we could give them a Tesla. <laughs> 38,000 trips a day, we could buy everyone a Tesla. And then prioritise local employment and local industries. So fuel price, price hikes in the cost of fuel, they've got a greater impact in regional communities. You're not able to spend money locally if you're 30% increase in fuel every other week. Main roads have the engineering capacity to design solutions. We need buses. This is at Armadale, um, Armadale Road, and so that's just been built. So the road has been lowered uh, and the through traffic just passes straight through. 
Um, and then the suburban traffic, there's the great big roundabout, and then they merge onto that road. Um, Main Roads engineers design that. Uh, this is a plan for Orong Road, which is, if you can imagine this through the centre of Mundaring as an example. So uh, the through traffic is on a lower level, um, and then at the surface level is your uh, residential streets. Um, you separate the, the interaction between those um, and you know, increase the flow. Flow is everything in terms of road, um, the nature of roads. You can increase a road from three to 5,000 vehicles an hour just by improving the flow. And that's the same West Coast Highway. So where it's, they, they say to us, you know, we can't fix Great Eastern Highway. Well, you couldn't fix Orong Road and you couldn't fix West Coast Highway. But if you ask the right question, they're perfectly capable of coming up with a solution. Um, so there are options that are available to the community. And my opinion is this is what we should be pushing because 80% of people are in that existing corridor. Um, that's not going to change. The traffic's not going to change. Um, the focus on Great Eastern Highway is the thing that will change. I think that's me. No one's asked them to look at it. Um, yeah, so that's probably it from me for this evening. It's a lot of information. You've got a copy of it there. Talk to people. Talk to neighbours. Um, we, he we hear the same things every time that we go out and have an opportunity to speak to anyone. We, we get the same feedback. Oh, it's 40 years. It's not going to happen, all this sort of stuff. I don't want to slap anyone in the face with it, but it's not all true. Um, so if we can start to get some of these talking points into the population and get people you know, having this conversation, we can sort of change this thing. That's me done. <laughs>